is indeed still a bull market? Well, we try very hard not to speculate. <laughs> uh, as you know, we're physical bullion merchants. We can always tell you how much it is now. We, we very rarely venture into the realms of telling you where it might be in two or three or five weeks' time because we really don't know. If we did know, don't forget, we wouldn't need customers. And to be quite honest, we've probably got 10,000 clients. And so that's quite a lot of, of, of people. That's why this business is good and big. That's why we get a good, strong feel for what's actually going on because we're, we're, we're getting feedback from an awful lot of people. Uh, the minute that we, we turned into a speculation business, I don't think we're that clever that we'd be there very long and we wouldn't actually need clients. They'd be a damn nuisance because they'd interrupt our thinking. So we aren't a speculation business. <laughs> no, I know. Boils down to. I, I wondered if you had, you know, just a personal opinion rather than a, a, a company stance. Ah, well, I, can't see, I, I personally can't see any reason why gold and silver shouldn't go up quite substantially over the next 12 months. Okay. Now, what happens if um, uh, loads of people are obviously sitting on loads of bullion under their mattresses at home? They seem um, to be. <laughs> at a certain point, people are going to want to sell that gold. Um, will there always be a market for that bullion? How does one well, go about selling it? Uh, well, we, we, we have no trouble buying it. We've, we've never stopped buying and we've never stopped selling effectively, except just for the short supply of coins at the moment. Um, we're, we're always in the market to buy. We have to buy as much as we sell. Mm -hmm. and, and so... The, the, the world bullion markets are quite well funded. They're pretty damn big, let's put it like that. Um, and so I couldn't foresee the bullion markets running out of money. And do you, ever see, do you ever see an end to this shortage of coins? Uh, yes. I, I, think it's been, I think it's been brought about, or, or the, the massive demand's been brought about um, by uh, the weakness of the banks and people being afraid to leave their money in banks. Um, but now... Uh, now the government seems to own most of them, or certainly has an interest in a lot of them. They seem a lot more stable now. And so I think the flight into coins uh, will slow down now. Uh, it, it, I'd be surprised if it didn't, um, because all those people that were um, rushing to get their money out of Iceland before it collapsed and that kind of thing, but it the writing was on the wall. Uh, and a lot of people withdrew a lot of money very quickly and were afraid to put it somewhere else. So they simply spent it on bullion. Now, I think that mad surge is now out of the way and will return to fairly normal levels of business. Until um, the next mad surge. Certainly by the time Christmas comes around, it will have gone quiet and then people will have moved it back to normal levels of business in January. And then uh, I think also that people are a bit scared of the impending recession, or perhaps it's not so impending, it's probably here now, uh, and uh, being rather conservative about saving some cash to see them through a, a hard time and perhaps putting the rest into gold rather than anything else. So um, I think all in all, the coin situation will ease because some buyers will, uh, uh, will, will continue, but n not to the extent that they have been. And some sellers will come out of the woodwork and you'll get a more even market then. Okay. Now, what percentage of, of your ordinary average Joe's portfolio would you advise them to keep in precious metals? Or what percentage of their net worth? Okay, firstly, let me make it very clear that we aren't financial advisors. Of course. Um, we, we don't like to advise people. Um, we, we aren't terribly interested in what else they have in their portfolios, and we certainly wouldn't be impertinent enough to ask them. Um, we, we would only say that, and don't forget, we have a very biased opinion, because that's what we do for a living, but we would only say that you should keep a reasonable amount of your, uh, of your wealth in precious metals, because eventually it'll be worthwhile. Do you ever see a return to the days of some kind of gold standard or perhaps where gold becomes a, an actual currency again? I know effectively it's a currency, but a, an actual one. Well, gold is generally um, favorably or, or, or whatever comparable with a foreign currency. It is a foreign currency. It's it. It's, it's traded against currencies, so it is essentially a foreign currency. I, I couldn't see a return to a gold standard because that would, that would effectively be the introduction of monetary controls. Uh, don't forget exchange controls went out, went out with Mrs. Thatcher. Um, and the, the difficulty for the government would be that all the exchange control mechanism was dismantled and the door is totally wide open and much money is all over the world. It's, it is a free world when it comes to moving your money around. And to suddenly introduce uh, exchange control again uh, would, would, would be virtually impossible. 
And so I can't I can't see that that would either work or be or, or be practically manageable. Uh, for a gold standard to be introduced, the government would have to confiscate all the gold. <laughs> uh, and the, I think it might have a bit of a job finding it, frankly. <laughs> well, it, it it certainly would. But w- I mean, what I was thinking of is, um, uh, you know, the, the various countries were meeting just last weekend to discuss uh, a potential new Bretton Woods. Um, do you see a possibility where globally there might be a senior currency that is backed by gold and then other tra- currencies trade against that currency? Ah, oh, that that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, if, if there were if there were a currency to, that was backed by gold, then that would be an extremely stable currency. Uh, for example, you've only got to have a look at the Swiss franc, uh, and what you'll find is that the Swiss franc is backed by more gold proportionately than any other currency, as far as I'm aware. It certainly has a high proportion of gold backing, uh, uh, and uh, note for note, more than mo- more than most other currencies. But it's also an extremely stable currency. So yes, is the answer to that. If a big currency like the dollar uh, were to be adequately backed by just say 40% gold, it would be something, uh, and that would massively stabilise uh, that uh, that currency. And as long as the government restrained itself and didn't issue um, print more paper, as it were, against a, 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 a stagnant gold pile, then you that, because that's called inflation, by the way, <laughs> you, you would have uh, a, a very stable currency where if if it were to be adequately backed by gold. Do you think, again, I keep reading about manipulation of the COMEX uh, in both gold and silver. Do you think some kind of price suppression is going on? Uh, It's a good theory. Um, I think think the market is far too big for that to happen. Um, I I think manipulating um, free markets in this, in in, in the, 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 the international manner of trade these days is extremely difficult. And I don't, and I think that the, the conspiracy theorists um, are basing their facts uh, on an incomplete picture. Uh, one of the one of the things that they're constantly saying is that silver is being manipulated because when you look at the market positions, there are thousands and thousands of ounces short in the market. That's fine. All they're looking at is what the, what, what is in the market. I frequently have very large short positions in the market. The reason I do that is because I've got very long positions in my vaults mm-hmm. where I bought in physical silver and I've sold it in the market to hedge my position. The answer being that when someone comes and buys my physical silver, I buy back my market positions. Yeah. And that's how I'm a non-speculative company. That's how I hedge my positions. And so if all, all, all that the conspiracy theorists are able to measure is market contracts. They can't tell you what's in my vault because I don't tell them. And so if I bought a whole load of, uh, of scrap silver, I, get, I buy tons from strange places, people that recover silver from x-ray plates that have been in, in, in hospital uh, cellars for 50 years. Um, you can't measure that kind of physical silver. I buy huge quantities of, of, of processed scrap with silver in it. Um, and when it comes in here for processing, that's physical silver that I've agreed a price on and I've, and I've bought and paid for. So I then sell that position forward in the market to hedge it until I've processed the silver and made it into something that I can sell. And then I buy back my full positions in the market. So it's not necessarily a whole market short position at all. It could be a whole load of physical silver out there. Very interesting. Do you have a, some kind of refinery there? Yes. Yes, we have, we have silver and gold refining processing here. Okay, excellent. Well, Tony, this has been an absolutely superb interview and um, thank you very much indeed for your time. And uh, if anyone wants to uh, find out more about Baird & Co, it's goldline.co.uk. That's the one. All right, Tony, thank you very much indeed. No, that's no problem. Thank you very much indeed. Commodity Watch Radio is presented and produced by Dominic Frisby for Mindsight with music by Manolo Camp. <laughs>